In this video, we'll cover motivation for root finding and the differences between roots and intercepts. Sometimes, we stumble across lengthy equations. This is commonly seen in the fluids, thermo, and heat transfer track of mechanical engineering. Take this equation, which describes how the temperature varies in the solid as you move across its length, x. Actually, theta isn't technically the temperature of the solid, but we'll ignore that for sake of example. This figure is theta plotted versus x. If you're curious, the equation and images came directly from the heat transfer textbook you'll use in your junior year. If I gave you x and told you to give me theta, all you'd need to do is plug x into the equation and chug. Graphically, you'd start somewhere on the x-axis, say at x1, and then you'd find the corresponding theta value, let's just say that's theta1. You have an input to the system and you want to find the output. Root finding is sort of the opposite problem. You have the output and you want to find the input that causes that output. Graphically, it would be like if I gave you a specific theta value, let's call that theta2, and told you to find the corresponding x value, let's call that x2. If you were to do that analytically, it would be like solving this giant equation for x, which I think is impossible. And if it is possible, you'd be pretty miserable doing it. Thankfully, we can use numerical methods to help us solve this problem. But what numerical method do we use? We could plug this into MATLAB and solve this via a symbolic solver, but that's incredibly tedious and not robust. Instead, we can utilize root finding. Root finding has been studied for years, so there are many different root finding methods we can leverage, such as bisection and newton raphson MATLAB has an incredibly powerful root finding function, which we'll cover soon. But before we start reviewing root finding methods, it's important to clarify what a root is and how it differs from an intercept. I hear roots and intercepts being thrown around interchangeably all the time in this class, and that's actually wrong. An intercept is a location where a function meets another function. For example, take the equation x squared equals 4. We would say this equation has intercepts at x equals negative 2 and 2. In other words, that's where the function y1 equals x squared meets the function y2 equals 4. And graphically, that would look like this, where y1 is just the parabola, y1 equals x squared, and y2 equals 4 is just a straight line. The intersection of these two points is our solution, negative 2 and 2. So when expressed in this way, x equals negative 2 and 2 are actually intercepts. On the other hand, a root is the special case of an intercept where the second function y2 equals 0. This is basically saying we want to find where y1 meets 0. If we want to find the root of this equation, we need to make a slight modification. We want to rewrite the equation such that we have some function equals 0. For our example, we can accomplish this by either moving the x squared to the right side of the equal sign, or by moving the 4 to the left hand side. I'll move the 4 to the left so we get x squared minus 4 equals 0. Now we have our y1, which is x squared minus 4, equals y2, which is our 0. And we get the exact same answer as above, x equals negative 2 and 2. Graphically, it would look like this, where we have y1 equals x squared minus 4 is that parabola, and then y2 is just a straight line at 0. And the points where they intersect are at negative 2 and 2. When written in this way, these become roots. And in this class, I like to refer to this as f of x equals 0 form. That's because root finding methods require a function in the form f of x equals 0. In order to find a root, one side of the equal sign must be set to 0. If not, you're finding an intercept, not a root. So in the example we just did, y1 equals x squared minus 4 is our f of x. When you're solving root finding problems on your workshop, make sure to move everything over to one side. For example, if I have the equation x squared plus x equals 6, this is asking me to find the intercept of the functions y1 equals x squared plus x and y2 equals 6. To find the roots, I'll move the 6 over to the left-hand side, so this becomes x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. This is an equation suitable for root finding because we have everything on the left-hand side and 0 on the right. 
So x squared plus x minus 6 is our f of x. If you solve this, you'll get x equals negative 2 and negative 1. But if you neglect the 6 entirely and say that f of x just equals x squared plus x, you'll get x equals 0 and negative 1 when you solve for the roots. I've seen too many people do this because they think they'll just remember the 6 later on, but they don't. And it also doesn't really work like that. So don't make this mistake on your homework or your workshops. Alright, see you soon.